Today we're going to be talking about the plasma cutter. There's multiple episodes in this series. I'll be putting them up in a relatively quick order, but we're going to talk about each one. This is a plasma cutter. Um, don't judge me. It's literally a hundred dollar Amazon Chinese special. It's, you know, nothing spectacular. It's not a $2,000 Miller plasma cutter. Um, what this uses, it's used 220 electric or 240. I'd also use 110, but the wear out real quick and uses compressed air. So what happens is there's a high frequency and an arc <laughs> and compressed air. What it does, it superheats the air and the metal and then blows it out of the way. This will actually cut fast enough, depending on the unit. This one doesn't work super awesome, but it works. Um, and I'm still playing with it. I haven't played with it much, um, but it'll actually heat the metal fast enough that the metal around it doesn't really get a chance to really get hot and distort, which is, so if you're cutting out a section to patch in, it's really nice for that. Why would I use this versus cutting torches? <laughs> you can cut a really fine line with where a cutting torch, you're not going to get a, as fine of a line. Um, this is, like I said, really good if you're doing tin work also, you can take it and you have a big sheet. You can just take it, your straight edge down and just go like that. I did that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, very, relatively quickly and get a straight line where a cut and torch, you can cut quick, but it's it's not going to be as quick. Can I do curved lines okay with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, Any, pretty much if you can put it down on this table or you know, on that surface and pull the trigger and go like that, you can draw any, line, any shape you want. Now, is this another one where I can't use it on aluminum and those other two? No, this will this will work on pretty much anything. It actually, I've never done it, but supposedly you can use it to cut glass. I've never actually done it. I've I've never actually seen anyone do it, but I've heard mention of it. So basically, what it is is what they'll do is they'll take a piece of steel, put it behind the glass and then take the plasma torch and what happens is you start the arc it'll start blowing that glass and heating it <laughs> and it'll connect to metal sheet underneath supposedly it works i don't know if it works with tempered glass i have never done it i've Do never played with it supposedly yeah wow. because it superheats it and it's it's a it's basically it's a um, plasma jet because it's vaporized air and a little bit of metal and it'll supposedly it'll cut straight i don't know I've, like I said, I've never done it, but. And all I need to run this is electricity and an air compressor. Correct. Um, like I said. So you're not constantly buying wire or anything else? Nope. The, oh, well, the, the only other thing is the consumable. So you have the ceramic tip, and then you have the two jets. And these will wear out. Can I get them in different sizes? Um, not really, but you're all you're looking to do is, so. What actually happens is, is the arc forms between these two points. And as the air blows, it blows that arc out and then creates through your grounding strap. So there's nothing for if you want a wider cut or a narrower cut. Nope. Which makes it nice and easy for buying parts. Yeah. It's less you really need to keep. Yeah. That's another one. And like I said, this is a cheap $100 Chinese one. Well, $100 one works. And this is high frequency. You cannot, because this one is high frequency, you cannot use this one for a CNC plasma cutter unit. Because when this kicks on, the high frequency will screw up cameras and computers. If I have my head set on while I'm working, which I do a lot, so when we're filming, I don't have to worry about it, mm -hmm. it'll turn my headset off, like completely. <laughs> it'll screw with computers in the area. You have to watch what's in the area when you're so you said this is high frequency, is that yes. also a low frequency one? Touch and lift. There's another one and basically what it is. So I can take this and I don't have to hold it directly on there. I can bring it up a little bit where the other one you have to be touching and then come up to start the arc. And what would I gain if I bought that $2,000 one versus this nice cheap one? I don't know. I, my Miller that I had before this, I liked. I used to cut through everything. I don't know if this had more circuitry in it because I've actually had that with like some of the newer welders. Um, a lot of them have voltage sensors and stuff in them. And I had, I've used old Snap-on ones, which were some actually not even made by Snap-on. They were made by some French brand. And I could literally sit there and weld two pieces of rust together with it. 
because I could turn it down, but it didn't have any, it didn't actually have all the voltage circuits because it was an old unit. So it said, oh, I see voltage and would just, and. So it would let you do more. Yeah, but like I said, but it was also, it was harder because it was a harder run machine because if it, there, the, the, the voltage sensors in them are actually there to help you with your welding. Okay. And you know, it, it a voltage. Compressed air and electricity. What? The uh, big miller. And the yeah, yeah, that's it. And you would it go. No matter what plasma cutter I get. Nope. It's always because be yeah, <laughs> um, it's because of the way that the, the way the pla it, what you're doing is you're creating plasma and you're blowing it out. Can I do anything with this besides cutting? Nope. That's all it's for. And other than the fact that, unlike you, we should wear safety goggles, do you have any tips for somebody doing this? Do you need welding gloves using this stuff? Um, depending on where you're working, you're probably going to want a set of welding gloves. Um, actually, I when I run this, this one, I a lot of times I will use just sunglasses. You can use your welding hood, but I will make sure I'm wearing sunglasses. It's kind of like the torches. Where, like, the, mil, the, the MIG welder, I wear my helmet. This is a helmet. And it's you know a, it's serious if you see Dima wearing safety equipment. <laughs> it's an auto-adjust helmet. This was a really cheap one. I've got this one. This is another auto-adjust helmet. This was cheap. Um, I think I paid 50 bucks for this one 15 years ago, and it still works fine. I maybe paid, I think I paid 50 bucks for this one maybe a couple of years ago, and it works good. Uh, this one actually uses watch batteries. This one uses double A's. Double A sounds better to me. Actually, triple A. Yeah, but actually this one, I haven't changed, changed the batteries. That one I have to change on a regular basis. You also have ones like this. Now this, cool. this is in an auto adjuster. You actually have to, there's a piece of glass that's tinted. And this is the old style. And what it is, you put it on, and when you're ready to weld, you go like that to flip it down, and you'd be looking through this little, little spot that's super, super dark. And what I mean by that, is i don't know how well this will show up on the camera can you tilt that up for us or the the lens piece so we can see the difference so i wanted to show already the difference. Yep. That was a, uh, <laughs> so that's a, what they call a fixed lens now like this one even knowing it's not lit up oh that's not adjustable let me okay there we go now see that'll get just as dark as the other one when you raise the flash from the welder you can get really nice ones what you know, if you're doing, if you're not doing it on a regular basis, this is fine for the most part. One. You know, these are nice because you can actually adjust the how how dark that glass gets and how quick they change their yep. adjustments makes a difference too. Yeah, because that was always my problem. I couldn't see what I was doing, and you turn on the welder. And well, that's it. So, like this one, you have to take your right. So the fixed ones, what you would do, you would take your weld, you'd set it up get it right where you wanted it to be, and say you're gonna weld a line here. So you'd set your welder up, flip your helmet down, pull the button and start welding. Where that one, and that they make really nice ones that are almost, to see through them is really bright. Um, but as long as you have enough light and you can see where your tip is, you can just put your tip down. You don't have to flip the helmet down. As soon as you pull that trigger, that thing darkens up. You let off, it auto undarkens. So, <laughs> and I've actually had, with that one, like where you go like that, and because when you went like that, now you've moved your tip. Depending on how 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 would you know how much, because what it is, even the other ones, if these knobs here is how you adjust how tight and how easy this falls down. Which if it's too loose, you'll be walking around and the thing will just go bam and smack you in the face. So one of the personal equipment or personal protection equipment, um, PPE that you need is gloves. Um, these are leather gloves. These are welding gloves. These are really good for if you're MIG welding or stick welding. Anywhere that you're gonna stick your hands, they're gonna get really, really hot. These will generally protect you. Um, they're not that expensive. So these are a pair of MIG gloves. The reason, these are actually, these are made out of, I think pig skin or something, but they're, they're supposed to fit really tight. You know, not like cut your circulation off. But what it is, it's for fine manipulation because when you're feeding that wire for a TIG welder, you need to, you need to have that. Um, you can use them for other things, but they're usually 16 to 20 bucks up to 35 and more, depending on the company. So are there any longer gloves or do I have to use short gloves? No, um, they make longer gloves that come up to there. They also make sleeves that you can pull up. Um, 
couple of companies that make them and they're fireproof, you know, heat resistant. So if I've got this glove on and you accidentally catch yourself with the torch, are they flammable? Um, you'd have to burn at them for a while. Look, uh, it's a quick flick over, you're okay? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're actually insulated. These things will get because they are insulated. So, you know, if you put something down, they will. it takes a little bit for them to get really, really hot. But on the same note, you're going to sweat in them in the summertime and they're going to stink and get nasty. Do you have any tips for when that happens? You put like newspaper in them or um, gold bond. Mm -hmm. You put gold bond in it, but you know, the other thing is you could probably stick something in there to keep it so the air can circulate. Are these washable? Yeah. Um, you probably could wash them in the machine. I would suggest hand washing them personally. You know. I mean, then you can control how much chemicals. You probably have to be careful the chemicals that you wash it with. <laughs> My biggest concern would be, you know, it just getting beat up in the, in the washing machine. Okay. You know. Then the other thing you're going to run into is because you really kind of can't turn these inside and that's where your hand is so that's where all your sweat and stuff is going to be so there's really no you really kind of can't turn these inside out easily that's good to know i hadn't tried to turn one inside out no, so yeah. i didn't know is that true on the other glove that you can't turn it inside no out? no these are like regular work gloves so those you could yeah these will and turn they could go in the wash machine if need be to get washed or something yeah um i per once again i probably wouldn't throw them in the washing machine I would probably just hand wash them real quick. All right, and if I was gonna go to a junkyard and try to cut up like a frame or something like that at a place that would let you bring a welder, yeah, which, I would bring cutting torches? Well, yeah, it wouldn't be a welder then, but most 99% of places are not going to let you bring in uh, cutters. Um, generally, even at big junkyards and stuff, all, they only want their guys doing it. It's too easy to cause a fire, you know? So what can you do if you are working around fuel lines or a gas tank or anything like that to try to make sure you don't have a fire or puncture something you don't want to puncture? Use some common sense, you know. Truthfully, um, the, the technical right answer is if you're doing any welding on it, remove the car battery, uh, remove the computers, remove the gas tank. Do they have stuff like that 3M for the windshield that you would put over like if you're working by line? Uh, yeah, you could use fire blankets and stuff. You know, but you don't want to be real close to, say, a fuel line or stuff, you know. Ideally, I just yeah. wasn't sure if they had shields. Yeah, you, you can get, even if you just stick a piece of metal or something, if you're welding really close to it, you can just stick a piece of metal or something, stick it up there just so it's it's reflecting the heat. Um, like I said, they make fire blankets and that kind of stuff. You know, welding blankets, which work pretty well. You know, you can get them. Uh, they're not super expensive. If you're going to be doing a lot of welding, especially TIG welding, they sell uh, shirts. They sell half shirts, which are just the sleeves, and up and only come up to about here. Uh, they sell whole jackets that are split leather There's or calf. Too, I think yep, I you can get aprons. Biggest thing with aprons is, and you always want, if you get aprons, you always want any of the stuff that you get, you really kind of want leather. Mm -hmm. um, Biggest thing is you have to keep an eye on your leather. It will suck moisture out of the air. It will get moldy, will get nasty if you're not careful, depending on your shop, you know, that kind of thing. The only other thing is with the aprons, um, actually there's a couple of companies that make really, really nice ones, but they're expensive. You know, you're, you're paying for what you get mm -hmm. for the most part. Sometimes there's a couple of companies that are selling really nice stuff and they're only just trying to get that stuff out in the market so you might get a good deal on it. But a lot of the aprons have pockets. A lot of times, hot ambers will fall into that pocket, and if you have a notepad or something, it'll cause that thing to burst into flames. <laughs> Wear boots. No open-toed shoes. No sandals. No flippity-floppities. The other thing is, make sure you tie your boots up and pull your pant legs over top of your boots, because I will tell you from personal knowledge that <laughs> hot ambers in your boot suck. <laughs> You know, hot ambers anywhere. Um, I have shirts because I've laid underneath cars or, you know, underneath something where I needed to weld. And as you're welding and you're MIG welding, you know, you have hot ambers. I have shirts that are covered in holes from it. Um, I get a tan. I have white dots that won't tan all over my arms and all over my chest and stuff from that. Now, why don't you get out in the garage and do something?